So here we are at Elion House Hotel, Ikoyi, Lagos, where Data Science Nigeria has organized an industry meetup with Professor Raj Krishnan all the way from the United States of America. I expect to be exposed to international best practices in the area of artificial intelligence, especially with regards to how we can you know, develop solutions to meet our needs, to solve everyday problems. Any time there's any new meetup or any, I just want to know. I've always believed in something else to learn. So there's something else to. There's always something new to come about, and that's and that's good for me. So basically, I just want to learn and um, basically know what data or how I can use data that is available to me. How data science can actually be demystified within our space and localized to solve problems here. So I'll be doing a short introduction of. Uh, Professor Raj Krishna is a te technology evangelist uh, with Microsoft with vast experience in developing solutions in partnership with companies. So he's somebody who works as an embedded consultant, see to the companies, understand their problem and translate it to solutions, which has given him ability and capacity to consult for various industries. And he's such a renowned expert in the area of natural language processes which he has, uh, you know, we would gladly share with us at uh, this evening. So, so a professor with RIT in Chicago, um, you know, I'm sure, you know, he's going to combine quite the rigors of the academics and also the industry feed about what is applicable. So he's going to blend the two and I'm sure we're going to have a great time. This can we get So I've Dr. been asked to Chuck. speak about uh, natural language processing in particular. You know, I, I do a lot of the data science work uh, in my role. Uh, but Bio asked me that there is a lot of, I had a, a small session here uh, remotely to talk about some of the data analytics, but Bio thought that maybe for this particular session talk about what are the application scenarios for natural language processing and how can the Microsoft tools that can help people to build systems that allows you to take advantage of natural language processing capabilities. Uh, first of all, to see passion like this, uh, you know, the commitment to individually grow the talent. And when a man like this asks you, how can you say no? <laughs> so I, I'm really thrilled to be here. As you can tell, tell, there is a transformation taking place and I'm dressing like Nigerian. And in another maybe two, three days, I might talk like a Nigerian. So, uh, so today, I just want to cover a few things. Like, as a, from a business perspective, uh, why does it matter? So I'm going to narrow it down, and I do a lot of things, but I just want to narrow it down to natural language processing. Why should you care? And if you care, and I want to do a little bit of a balance, and hopefully my laptop will be active, to see uh, what are the tools that are available, uh, particularly from a Microsoft side guide, you know, I'm loyal to the company. Well, my expectation is, I believe there is a good composition of people from business and uh, technology. So, if I can at least uh, create some awareness and interest in what can be done, what does natural language processing mean, why should you worry about it, how can you apply it in your business, and also, instead of just saying what all can be done, if the developers, who, if they know what is out there, for them to take advantage of the technology, to implement those solutions, that would be my goal. You know, in, in an hour we cannot change the world, mm -hmm. but at least we can make people aware of what's the, what is the application and what tools we have. So, natural language processing, it is trying to see what human can do using machines. And when the human can do, I'm not talking about the mundane task of doing things. Do you realize that as much as we may not think too much about ourselves, there are things, look at our eye, what it can see and what it can process. When I say context of the speech, you know, let's, let's take an example. If I say Paris is hot, you can interpret it any way depending upon what was said before, where I am. For some people it may be Paris Hilton is hot. You know, or it, it, for some people, the temperature in Paris is hot. Or for some people, Paris is a really growing city. It's a hot thing, things are happening. Human knows because of the context. Computer cannot interpret that. The biggest challenge in this natural language processing is giving context to what is being said. So you might ask, then why do we have to have a machine? Why can't human do it? The problem with human is that, again, some people incorrect. That uh, data is, um, uh, is a valuable asset, it's a raw material, 
in this industrial age, we are entering the fourth industrial age. So we need to start understanding the kind of things we can do with data. And data science is at the forefront. Uh, data science Nigeria is at the forefront of making sure that people are aware of the opportunities data code. So with this turnout, I mean, it's impressive that more and more people are embracing this opportunity. And we just hope with time, the 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 the, the people that attend such increases, and then that means. Its impact to the society will be felt. It takes a long time going through email and just finding out what it is and interpreting it. Can I do it? Yes, it's a boring and mundane task. I want the machine to do it. I want, like, you know, we had in Microsoft one example where uh, the, um, we have, a, you know, everybody, when we have a question, we go to our technical community and ask, hey, do you know that uh, when there is an Azure Data Factory, that can I have? A, a process uh, kicked off uh, without uh, being on a scheduled cron job. And then we, the, somebody wrote a nice blog, but it finds it, and then it looks into the inventory if people have answered the question. And because a lot of times people repeat the same question because they haven't read the other question. So there was one guy who was a community leader. This guy doesn't sleep. He's answering everybody the same thing, and he remembers, oh, there was one, and he goes and searches all. So somebody wrote a blog. And that goes and searches all the active, looking for the word recognition pattern. Oh, this is the most potentially, hey, this has been already answered. Now, to me, it's not eliminating human. It is being very effective using natural language processing. Right? Those are the kind of applications that we want to use uh, natural language. So artificial intelligence is that. You know, I, I like what one of our company vice president of data analytics said. What is the alternative? Natural stupidity? <laughs> <laughs> so we need. Uh, artificial intelligence. So, so in the in particular within the art, uh, natural uh, artificial intelligence, we talked about perception, we talked about sensing, we talked about face, and all those things. But in a particular area, which uh, Vail asked me to address, is that language processing. Even in the language processing, we have a couple of things. You know, where speech processing the speech, understanding the human speech, and uh, translating it and doing that. Uh, if you n notice, if you ever get a chance, we have a Microsoft. Uh, Office 2016, this is not a plugin, but uh, if you have Office 2016, they have added one thing called translator. And they were demonstrating that, and I was blown away by it. As you speak about a slide, it takes the speech and in live translated into language that you pick Chinese, Spanish. You may think it's easy, but language translation is one of the hardest things because each language has a different way of expressing. Getting the context, it's not about taking each word and translating. Looking at the, the sequence of words, you know, the dependency of previous words. There are many, many things. And to take that and then translate that as you speak live, to me, that's technology. Right? That makes it so I can go to any country and then speak, and the people can now see the text uh, visually. So the, the, the problem is that, that the ambiguity, like I said, Paris uh, is hard. Is the, biggest challenge because the computer has to know what's being said it doesn't know you know sometimes I'll have a conversation about something five minutes before and the rest of the people will know when I say something it relates to that one but the computer doesn't know that so it has to figure things out and create context you know it has to uh, extract some entities. When I say I like to be uh, in Nigeria, it has to know Nigeria is a country. It has to know life is an emotion, and it has to relate all that. It's a pretty daunting task, and so far it has always been rule-based. Okay, if you did that, you do this. And then what it means rule-based is you have to create tons and tons of rules, which is not humanly possible. The other one was from annotated data. So some people would have taken something and said this is what it means, which means hundreds of graduate students and other people doing all this annotation and then leveraging that. If you look at Google's Ngram uh, viewer, one of the things that as soon as you type some words, Google goes through its all the libraries and the books and looks at the context and says, okay, uh, what it is, uh, what is that uh, it means? Because it tries to relate those two words based on how it was said in the multiple things. That's what the machine can do because it doesn't have the deciphering capability that a human has. You can only look to say, okay, how was it done in the past? Uh, what could this be? And then try to come up with a reasonable thing. That's why this is a very challenging. But now what has happened, science has existed for all these years. Right? It's not a question of mathematics or the thing. 
what has changed is now the availability of computing resources, things like cloud. I'm waking up to this reality and I'm happy for Data Science Nigeria because they are key into it and they are actually trying to promote it. And a lot of students in the university actually are seeing this and they are interested and they started working on it. So I believe in the next five years we are going to have it. It's something that will be like, like say for now we are like 5%. In the next five years we will get like 35, 40%. I think so. Yeah. Okay, so bringing it down to what happened here this evening, Mr. Bayo mentioned that some people from your school, from your department, they had wonderful ideas. Yeah. So how does that make you feel? It makes me, it makes me feel good. I tell some of them that the reason why I'm seeing academics is because I'm interested in raising people that can make impact, not just going to school, get a first degree and looking for a job, but people that understand how they can use technology to change our world. So and that's and solve problems. They had, they had to just to do a, a data transformation every evening. Just for that alone, they had hundreds of servers. And after that thing is done, they shut it down. They can afford it, as you know, the financial institutions, they have the money. But not every company can afford it. That's what has changed now. You, as an individual, you can just spin up something and use only that, that service for the time that you need and then shut it down or do not pay. So there are a couple of things where you can either have a on-demand infrastructure that is created to address your needs, or you can use what we call an API, where every time something happens, I'm going to use the API to, to do uh, face recognition, to do voice recognition, to do uh, natural language processing. So Microsoft has been doing, yeah. So I really like this goal, when you look at the Microsoft research, that they want to build something so that eventually people can talk to a computer as if they're talking to somebody else. And we're not there yet, there's a constant challenge. But the ultimate thing would be, I would talk to you, to the computer, and it knows what I'm trying to say and just promptly sends me what, you know, um, what, uh, you know, what I, I'm trying to say and address it and, uh, and do that in a reciprocated that, uh, that manner. I think for me, it just continues to talk about the opportunity that um, there is in data to really change the narrative in the country. I think we've learned how we could use big data to solve a lot of our problems. And the fact that um, Data Science Nigeria is very committed to capacity building, and uh, we're going to continue to see a lot of that in 2018. And we're very happy as Microsoft to continue to partner with them and seeing how we can help to develop this ecosystem and make sure that data is really doing the right things um, for the country and really impacting lives and changing society. Basically, he talked about natural language processing and how to use like your voice and all that to actually for security purposes, for advertising, for insurance. You know, he talked about like, using natural language processing in different phases of life, which is quite fascinating and interesting because if we as a country, different individuals and industries could key in to this, it would open Nigeria into like the global market for data science, like what data science Nigeria is already doing. Well, there's one uh, particular bank asked me, can you help me put together a staffing plan for data scientists? That's what these guys should be doing. But hey, this is what a data scientist is. Uh, this is other people here, some of the people give us internship. Promote the to uh, community here. The kind of standards he has for the boot camp, it's not free. He makes sure they all get 80%. They all take 10 courses. He's getting top notch candidate. I see only KPMG is hiring. There should be more companies who should be part of this program and absorb these people in their uh, work. Albert Einstein said uh, that if he had seen for that, it was because he stood on the shoulders of giants. We thought that if Nigeria is going to play in the global space, we need to bring people who are already playing in the global space. We need to learn from them. We need to learn and know what they've done well. Uh, we need to, in building our narrative, we cannot remove the fact that we need to learn from other people. And when we incorporate their learnings, what has worked, what did not work, with our own context, we can come out with something that is meaningful, applicable, and relevant to our situation. And that's why we made that big bold decision to bring uh, Professor Raj to Nigeria to share his very vast experience both in the academia and industry and consulting as a leading Microsoft expert and as a leading professor at IIT Chicago, uh, United States. Okay, um, I think the question for me and uh, a lot of people want to know is for 2018, um, what, are, what, are, what are the key strategies in place to drive innovation in Nigeria? 
Well, I think the biggest thing for us next year is companies must consider big data as your ultimate game changer. There's so many data out there, uh, but we are not able to bring them together because they are not structured. And that's why we as a team, we are focusing on natural language processing, which allows us to be able to analyze data that are not zeros and ones. Many of us are, you know, we can analyze data in Excel, how many people and all that, but when you're analyzing emails, analyzing what people are saying on Twitter, analyzing what people are saying with, you know, their voices, analyzing smileys and emoticons, it's more complex and more demanding. But for our part of the world, that's where we're going to get it all inside. And that's why we believe that if we're able to build the right tools, solutions that are Nigerian-centric, we can answer those fundamental problems, uh, position Nigeria industry to be able to do much more in terms of optimization and efficiency. And then we can also make it easier for customers to access our services because now they do not need to know English or be able to read and write to be able to, because now they can use voice, they can use a lot of other things to be able to achieve that. Yeah. Okay, sir. It's a pleasure. So looking at the turnout this evening, it shows that a lot more people are getting interested in data science. I mean, the hall was packed full. What do you have to say about that? What we were actually impressed at the attendance because this whole event was planned within five days when we had that uh, Professor Raju be in the country. So we're so impressed when we saw a lot of people. So it's so clear that we're in a learning nation. We're a nation that is curious for next frontiers of knowledge. Nigeria, you know, go to international universities. Nigerians are there. Go to Ghana, Nigerians are there. We go any land to get knowledge. And we're able to bring those knowledge to us. You know, Nigeria will always be there to access those opportunities. Okay, thank you very much.